Hi everybody and welcome to the Toronto Real Estate Show with Janelle and Leslie. I'm Janelle Cameron. Hi there, I'm Leslie Pearson. And today we're going to give you some real estate strategies for both buyers and sellers. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you had a really great week. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to give you some strategies for both buyers and sellers, if that happens to be you and you are thinking about doing one or the other, it's good to know how to do it right now because the market is odd and strange. And let's talk about that. First of all, I almost get the impression maybe things have, like it's obviously really slow, but at least I sold a couple of things. Like we had a couple sales where we weren't expecting yeah, I think that um, things are very definitely slow mm -hmm. um, and it's more than just a typical summer slowdown in that I think it um, started earlier than typical and kind of went flatter mm -hmm. than typical. Usually there's some activity, usually there's a summer lull, and mm -hmm. but there's some activity in July and August is really quiet. It kind of felt like an August. It did or, feel like an August. And then a, like a slower August than usual. Yes. Yeah. So I think that um, I don't really understand why. No. Um, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but it's strange. It's just strange. Like I do have. Uh, I mean, I have the, the basic, obvious theories about interest rates and things like that. But yeah. then why? I don't know. I guess. I guess it's hard to admit this, but I guess the market just is. The prices are dropping. I guess that's really what it is. Like prices really are dropping, yeah. but sellers are not willing necessarily to entertain that thought. So yeah. they don't drop the price. But the only things that, that seem to be selling are ones that have dropped price. Yeah, it seems, I agree with you, that when sellers are acknowledging the current market and are willing to compromise and negotiate, they're, those are selling. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's a tough tough pill for a seller to swallow. It is. Um, and buyers, I think, believe that prices are going to further fall. So they're kind of, most of them, I think, for um, for the most part, are holding back. Mm -hmm. I think they think there's going to be a much greater decline in prices. Yes. Price. So I think that that and some theory about uh, one interest rate reduction announcement not being enough. Yeah, so that a couple more, at least one more, has to happen for people to get motivated to move. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's definitely weird. I will say though, interesting. Like on some of the listings we have, we are getting showings, and then on other ones, we're not getting anything. Yeah, um, but the ones that we are getting showings, like you know, they will. They're sort of eventually selling. Yeah, but then there's ones that keep getting regular showings, but it just seems like buyers, they're out there looking, they just don't want to do anything. Yeah. And uh, the difficulty for us to try and analyze and then act on, you know, sound reason is that sometimes there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason uh -huh. to the ones that stagnate and the ones that don't. Like, yeah. you know, we've got one in particular that I, I just don't get it. She yeah. sold months ago. Yeah. Like, I don't understand yeah. it. There's no reason. No reason. reason. Yeah, I don't. Okay. So we would never have predicted that, and I think we certainly now, months later, can't even explain it. Yeah, I and mean, I think if you're right downtown, like you're struggling. Yeah, okay. and that's the only explanation. I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. all we can. That's all we yeah. can guess. But we had um, some condos listed over the winter right downtown, and yeah. they were a struggle. Um, but they eventually, eventually things sell. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> eventually they will. Yeah. Just I think right now more than ever that we've seen probably in a long time, you have to have the right price. Yeah. And figuring out what the right price is is not so easy anymore. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, sellers, like you need to come to grips with the reality Yeah. and not be expecting 2021 prices because they're just not there right now. Mm -hmm. Or or you can just wait it out forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, life happens and, um, you know, some people have to sell now. Mm -hmm. And so they have to act with the reality of this market in place. But I don't know, and I don't know if I'm straying off tro topic or into topic, but if I didn't have to sell, I don't think I would. No, I don't think I would now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then again, is I have no faith it's going to get better. 
I don't know. Like I don't know. So you're saying that so prices are lower than they were in 2021? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everywhere? Most places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not by a ton, but enough mm -hmm. that what what I do see selling now are places that are a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of brings us to our topic because both buyers and sellers right now need more appropriate strategies on how to handle this market. Yeah. So we've come up with a few strategies for both that we think are worth sharing. And let's talk about that because mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, let's talk about buying first. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to kind of get your head in the right place if you're buying right now and what that means. Um, so the first thing I wanted to kind of talk about with respect to that was the fact that, um, you know, when it comes to buying and selling strategies, buyers need to really be aware that they're going to have opportunities to get good prices, mm -hmm. but not to be totally unrealistic. Um, and I think that's important to note because I do see almost like, um, you know, a mentality that anything goes and any offer goes and like, it's a really weird time. We've talked about this where, you know, one side is thinking one thing and the other side is thinking the other. Mm -hmm. Um, but buyers I think need to have a realistic strategy going in mm -hmm. when they're buying and really kind of think about, okay, you know, what is it that I want? What makes sense for me to, um, you know, to, to offer on or bid on that's going to actually be a, a working scenario because I do think buyers are throwing in offers left, right, and center on things and not getting anywhere and then they're getting frustrated. Yes. And I've seen that in, in even, even in some of the, of my clients, like throwing in offers for things that, you know, they're never going to get. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's doesn't work either. So it's more of, I think, an idea of trying to figure out, okay, what's realistic, right? Yeah. If your budget is 800,000, um, it doesn't make sense for you to be looking at properties at a million dollars and thinking you're going to get it for eight. That's probably not going to happen. And I'm not suggesting that you don't mm -hmm. try for a deal, but mm -hmm. maybe more like 900, maybe you might get it for 820 when it would have sold for yeah. you know yeah I mean there's always been this gap between buyer and seller expectations and it's typically been that sellers are looking backwards yeah. and you know how their neighbors did in the past and buyers are looking forward to predicted further drops in prices predicted by them uh -huh. um, and there's always been that difference um, but buyers and so the temptation to like significantly low ball is great mm -hmm. in this kind of market when that gap in perception between buyers and sellers is is greater than it's ever been um, but at the end of the day you have to have an agreement between two parties a buyer and a seller and a seller is not going to want to give their place away That's right. you know unless something's mandated by court or something there's not going to be just like a bloodletting and yeah. so that's where we are right now is sellers if they are at all realizing what the reality is now mm -hmm. they're compromising yeah. um, and I think they're compromising more than buyers who are trying to get away with things and in the end result what I often see that means is that contributes first of all to why places stay on the market and don't sell yeah um, but also why you see um, prices changing maybe more than we're used to them changing up and down and not sideways mm -hmm. it's, I think that sellers are reacting to what buyers are doing yeah and yeah. so that if, you, if you want to buy a house you want a deal, but you don't want a scam, and uh, sellers are not going to go for it. And it takes both of you, buyer and seller, to compromise and land somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's, um, with few exceptions, there's no point in a buyer having that attitude That's that you right. talk about. Like yeah. it's just going to go nowhere. Yeah. And it's what like What are you doing? Are you just thinking? Are you liking to look at houses, or yeah. are you wanting to buy a house? Exactly. Um, That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, now, one strategy I would recommend, though, is 
get in now. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and I think that's an important point. It may seem obvious because we always talk about it, but getting in now I think is, is super important because I don't know what things are going to do in the fall. Like I have no idea at this point, but I do know that there are deals to be had right mm -hmm. now and there are lower prices than we've seen in a long time. So even though we're not suggesting you go crazy with it, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're waiting for if you're not buying it. Yeah, I mean, if there ever was a buyer's market, it's now. Exactly. And so um, wouldn't you want to be taking advantage of that if That's you're right. a buyer? Now is a great time to buy. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly downtown condos. Absolutely. But, you know, beyond yeah. that as well. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and along with that would be go now and get some sort of, you know, pre-approval, obviously, but start to, I think if you can get pre-approved at, at where we are now, chances are pretty good that rates are going to drop a little bit more. So it's good to log something in, you know, I think so that if you have a, obviously if rates go down, yours will go down as well. Right. So if you lock something in, it doesn't mean you're going to pay that rate when That's you right. actually buy. Yeah. You're just locked in at that rate and you could benefit from some further decreases. That's right. Yeah. Uh, because we have more inventory on the market now than I've ever seen, especially for a downtown condo. So um, you know, you've got options. You don't know when the right one is going to come along. So if you've got that pre-approval set and ready to go, at least you know, you know, you can you can jump when you're ready to jump. Mm -hmm. And that's important, I think, because people are they're kind of waiting to see what's going on. Well, let's just say for argument's sake, prices do go up in the fall and you haven't locked in now and it's going to take a while for you to get the pre-approval and start your research about what you can approve and all of that you know you're going to maybe miss yeah you know anything could happen with them we've seen this with the real estate market a week or two or three can make a huge difference when prices start to climb they'll go fast yeah and we've always talked to our buyers about the importance of preparation so that when that um, ideal house for you comes along you're ready and you're prepared to act on it and put an offer on it. You're not then scrambling to yeah. get your pre-approval, transfer money to have a deposit, you know, that kind of thing. Thinking about closing dates mm -hmm. and giving notice if you're renting. Do all that now. Yeah. So that when you're ready, you can go. Yeah. We've always said that and, and it's a good idea now. And I think, yeah. you know, based on that and kind of, you know, going maybe a little, one step beyond that is when it comes to all of the inventory that's out there, which we haven't seen in a really long time, I would even start shopping now. Even if you are maybe a month or so away, just started getting out there to see what's available because a lot of those places may still be around in a month or two when you're ready. And maybe then, at least now, you've seen as much as you can see. Mm -hmm. With all of this inventory out there, you've got choice for the first time. It's a really weird thing for us because we're used to people doing anything to get a house. I mean, they give away their you know left arm in order to be able to secure something. But now, mm -hmm. you know, they've got choice like we've never had before. Yeah, and typically over the summer, especially, there isn't that choice. I wonder if a lot of these listings will go off. I think they will. Yeah, and come yeah. out again. And maybe yeah. come out again. Yeah, so before that, ha and I imagine that'll happen after the long weekend, so be, you know, maybe the first, second week of July. So before that timing, get yeah. out and, and see them now. Yeah, see as much as you can see. Yeah. And keep your eye on them. If there's one or two things you like, keep an eye on it. Yeah. Because you never know. Yeah. Right? It may still be around when you're ready. Yeah, and it's funny because I don't have the um, I don't have the strong sense that prices are dropping like crazy. Not like crazy. I'm just seeing it in level like month over month. Month over month, they've actually risen. They're like year right, over right. year, they've dropped. Right. But but year over year since 2021. Yeah. Yeah. But month over month, they're increasing. Yes. So we, you know. What we have to keep in mind though, is that we're not seeing everything, right? So when the stats come out, they're only talking right. about what's sold, yeah. not all the things that went off the market or relisted or whatever. Uh, but yes, yeah, so over the prices fell um, last year and then again, a little bit this year, but, but not by much, yeah. just a couple percent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the peak in 2021, yeah, yeah. they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, 2021, they were much. Mm -hmm. I think our average price 
in for a detached home at that point was almost 2.2 mm -hmm. or about 1.7 right now. Mm -hmm. So it's a fair bit different. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what else do you think buyers can do? I think, um, you know, talking, we talked a little bit about interest rates, talked about knowing the inventory, getting sort of really realistic with the market conditions so that you're not wasting your time or any other seller's time, I think is important. Yeah, and uh, really nailing down what you want, what you're looking for. Yeah. So many times I have buyers that, you know, certainly start down one path and then they change their minds and where they want to be and what they want and we go all over the place. Yeah. Do that work now too. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not sure that you want to be buying at all, then that's a whole different story. Then don't then don't bother with the whole yeah. the whole thing. I see, yeah. I see people do that. Yeah. I think also um, you know, buyers need to manage their expectations because I don't know about you, but there might be much more inventory but it's, there's not a lot of inventory I'm excited about. Yeah. I don't know if, you, if you're finding that, but I'm kind of like, eh. Condos, I find there's some pretty good stuff out there. But mm -hmm. yeah, regular inventory, I would tend to agree. Yeah, so, um, you know, if that's if the deals are to be had, they're not at the super done, uh -huh. much coveted uh, homes. Those are still going to fly like crazy, I think. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so maybe you have to, um, compromise a little bit yeah. to get that great advantage yeah. of a buyer's market right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about some seller strategies. Cause I think they, they're struggling even more than buyers. I right think so. Now. Yeah. Um, because for the first time in a long time, it's not a seller's market. Yeah. You've got to get realistic yeah. about where we're at. And so it's funny. We had a conversation just before we started this about, um, some of our clients who are really putting a premium on their particular property for various things that nobody cares about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they think it's really important that they have an extra yeah. wide parking space close to the door yeah. of the condo, but the reality is no one really cares about that and they think it's worth more money for that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we're not getting offers. Yeah. So it's it's I think you have to be realistic. This is not the kind of market to be unrealistic or have a pie in the sky price view because it's not going to serve you. Yeah, no, you can't look to the past too for what your neighbor sold and think that has to happen to you. Yeah. When you're um, owning and updating or renovating your property, um, you have to be, I have so many know so many people who over renovate right or the renovation is so particular to their likes right that um you know you've got to give a thought thought i think to future sale because yeah. nobody cares that you have that you know specially important imported something from italy like they're not they going to pay not for, paying that. for that yeah no. No. Paying for a nice bathroom, but you know, there's a premium on nice bathrooms. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think it's really um, being realistic about all of that. Yeah, the prices what are what someone's going to pay. If you need to sell, and you are not getting showings, something's wrong. Well, and it's the wrong is always price, isn't it? It's always price. Yeah, it always um, comes down to the numbers. So I think you have to keep adjusting to get to the number that you need mm -hmm. and figure out what that is. And I'm sorry if that's a lot less than you were anticipating, but the market is talking to us and we mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm. how, we don't necessarily know what that number is going to be anymore. You know, yeah. just because your neighbor sold for 750 last year doesn't mean you're going to get 750 or 730 for that matter. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be looking at 700 and that's just how it is. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think being realistic about price, being realistic about the process mm -hmm. gone for the moment are the days where you have 50, 60 showings on every listing. Yeah. Um, maybe we just sold one, which is the busiest listing I've had in quite some time. And I think we had 16 showings that was busy. Mm -hmm. Um, and they all came in the first few days and no one came again. Yeah. And that's, um, that's the reality. Yeah. Where I think people are used to, well, I, God, the last time I sold, I had 100 people through. Yeah. That's not probably the case anymore. Yeah, and that translates into if you get any offers or if you get more than one offer. Yeah. You have, you have to manage your thoughts about that because, you know, yeah. you've in particular been involved in uh, listings that I think it, 
had one had 18 offers. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not seeing that. Not right now. No. <laughs> you know, and it, we should have probably never seen it anyway. Probably 16 of those were always irrelevant. That's true. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Be, and that was even in March. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a different day. Yeah. Now, in terms of that, I'm also feeling like sellers need to be realistic about timing because this is going to take some time if you are selling. Um, it, it may be a couple of months and that's not unreasonable right now. So that you kind of have to be prepared mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. so. It all depends. Um, I'm, still seeing, I'm still seeing a fair amount of offer days. There are. And going. Yeah, they seem like 50-50. Well, yeah. not even, I wouldn't even say that. Say 70, 30 are not yeah. selling. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah, some are clearly are not going. But um, yeah, we, uh, I've had buyers who've been involved in multiples lately. So it just seems it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, and those are lower end pricing freehold houses. Yes. They're going. Yeah, they seem to be going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Anything mm -hmm. listed for eight ninety nine, mm -hmm. yeah. Is going. Is yeah. going. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for most sellers, especially if you own a condo, it's sort of like just take your time. Yeah. You know, be prepared. You may have to do some price adjusting. We may have to do a few different things, but at the at the end of the day, it's going to take some time. Yeah, and um, you know, it's hard to say as real estate agents, but maybe your strategy right now is not to sell. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. Yeah, that's a strategy. Yeah, it is a strategy. Yeah. Um, but if you are selling and you get an offer, yeah, be realistic. Yeah, then, then another agent. strategy is really like entertain negotiating. Yeah, listen to your agent, listen to the market. I mean, always the market speaks. Yeah. It's telling you something. And if after two months you have no offers, it's telling you to reduce your price. Yeah. If after a bit of time uh, you have one offer, it's time to pounce. It's and time to negotiate. Grab it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's hard because I think a lot of people are not aware that this may be the best offer that they get. And yeah. in our experience, in our long <laughs> time that we've done this, the first offer is generally the best you get. Yeah, Not always, always yeah. but generally. It's funny because often that's the case for sellers. It's hard for them to, mm -hmm. to accept. Well, I can't just accept the first thing that comes along. Right. But often we find it is the best. Yeah. And on the flip side for buyers, buyers sometimes have a hard time saying, well, I can't. I love it, but I can't offer on the first house I see. Exactly. And often they can't get that house out of their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny too because they, yeah. yeah. yeah there's something about first impressions and, and firsts yeah. uh, that we've seen a lot of times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I fell victim to that. I remember. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that house that got away for me. It was the first one I saw. And I, I can too. And I didn't get it. Yeah. I can still. Too. Sorry about it. I can too. I still think about it. I still yeah. remember how it smelled, how I felt in there. I yeah. didn't I didn't buy it. I uh yeah, I, I have that same experience. Yeah. So now as a seller too is a strategy, do you more than ever have to make sure your house is prepped as best as it could be? Because yeah. not all houses are selling mm -hmm. and uh you want to be the one that sells. Yeah. And we've talked about this ad nauseum, but it's you know painting it's decluttering it's some form of staging i'm not saying you have to hire a stager although it's helpful yeah but you know you've got to at least have everything as perfect as it can be you want to be the one that sells you want to be the one that and sells those efforts make a difference more than ever they really do in this kind of market yeah mm -hmm. and unfortunately i know some clients say well if i do that kind of work the chances are i'm going to get more money than you know my neighbor sold for but that's not necessarily the case right now but you, you have to do it just to get seen yeah and you know to have a hope of selling I think. Right, exactly yeah mm -hmm. um and i would say now probably more than ever for a seller don't take any offers or any feedback personally you know this is a business transaction for everybody if you if you're listed for $9.99 and someone comes in with some crappy offer as we've told people don't do but if they do do it don't take it personally and get your back up and and act defensively you know be rational and reasonable on how you deal with the offer it's you can always sign it back there's always an opportunity to negotiate 
but I do find right now more than ever sellers are very sensitive mm -hmm. to the offers that come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when it was a seller's market, buyers would do anything mm -hmm. that they could to be the chosen offer, and so often, you know, they would um, they wouldn't put any obstacles in the way of sellers. They'd be raving about everything because they mm -hmm. wanted to be the one that got the house. That's right. Now they don't have to do that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Although interestingly, we recently we just had a sale, and for the first time in a long time, I had the um, the buyers wrote a letter to the sellers. Yeah, that's I haven't seen that in several years. Yeah, I I, I one of my uh, buyers did it this yeah. earlier in the year. Oh yeah, and at your uh, recommendation? No. Yeah. No, I would never recommend that. No, I wouldn't either. No. Mm. Um, but they wanted to do it anyway. Yeah. And I was like a little weirded out presenting it. But yeah. Yeah. But they, I mean, they did get the house, but it, it was because of the money, not because of the life. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. know. It's a nice thing to do, but I don't think, yeah. it all, money, money talks. Yeah, so when in the heated market, when you were up against 17 other buyers, you know, I guess yeah. your thinking is, do anything that would make a difference, and that might have. I don't even know if back then it did. Right. Um, but now, no. No, yeah. it's, if you if a seller gets a, an offer in hand, it's the money. Yeah, because nothing else is selling in that neighborhood. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything else you can think of, or is that kind of cover everything you think? Strategies. I I'm, I'm going blank, but it sounds yeah, like that's good. That's probably yeah. it. I think I think the important thing is whether you're buying or selling is just kind of this wake up to the reality you're in right now today in June of 2024. It doesn't mean it's going to be the same in September. Yeah, no. I'm actually optim I maybe for the first time ever a bit more optimistic than you. Yeah, I I've just I don't know. I'm not, I'm not pessimistic. I'm just not sure. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm just no. I don't well, have that high sense sure. of optimism anymore. Nobody can be sure. It's sort of like I guess we're just going to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when's our next interest rate announcement? Is that July? July. Yeah. yeah. And then there's one not in August but September. September, I believe. I think the fall's going to be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all waiting, waiting to hear. But mm -hmm. I gotta say, it's all kind of driving me crazy. I, I think it's going to continue month to month increasing. Yeah, and I think those increases might increase. Yeah, um, increase the increase. Yeah, so I like, I like I, your thing. <laughs> I don't know. We want to increase the increase. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully that's helped you a little bit if you are looking for some strategies and. Uh, just, we'll wait and see what happens. We'll ride this wave together. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our channels, the social channels at the Janelle Cameron team. And always appreciate when you rate this podcast. And of course, spread the word too, because it's really awesome when you do that. And we're yeah. growing and we're so happy about it. But we love it when our our fans we have some fans and yeah we have one our when those of you do you know spread the word out there we get more listeners going so i guess that's it for now have an awesome week and happy real estate happy real estate everyone